All right guys, I'm out here on the boat and I'm installing the new Evo 3s here. I just wanted to show you some differences between the Evo 2 and the Evo 3. I have 16 inch displays here. On the left here is the Evo 3. And what they did was they made this lip a little taller. So it's a little stronger. If you look the Evo 2, it's a thinner lip from flush installations here. The only downside of that is the holes don't line up. So if you are gonna replace an Evo 2 with an Evo 3, you will have to drill new holes. Another change here on the front, if you look, you have a magnetic door here on the Evo 3, which is really nice. It's waterproof that way, so you don't have to pop a plug in and out like you did with the Evo 2. Here's the Evo 2. And these doors sometimes come off. So that's an upgrade there. Also on the touch pad here, you can completely control the unit without touching the screen. If your hands get all mucky, you can control the entire display by these buttons here. All right, let's look at the backs. Here's the Evo 2. Here's the Evo 3. Well, notice the Evo 3 is thinner. So it gives you a little more room for your flush installation. And also, if you're gonna mount it up on top, you get a little more room in the back with the Evo 3. All right, I'm looking at the back of the displays here. This is the Evo 2. You can see they use more of a flat screen television mount here to mount it flat on a wall. Uh, that was a problem for people who did not want to flush mount it. I had to use a ram mount. It wasn't quite right, and I had to drill some holes to make it work. Uh, we're on the new Evo 3. They realized a lot of people were trying to mount them on top, so they came out with the old-fashioned bracket, and they did upgrade it with a nice plastic panel here. This pops off and covers your holes. I thought that was a really nice option so people can go ahead and mount it on top of their helmet if they want to. All right, I flipped the displays over here, gonna make some comparisons. You see the Evo 2 had a blank spot here. The Evo 3 now has a USB port, which is really neat because you can do updates with a stick drive if you like. You don't have to always use your memory cards. This way you can leave your chart cards in there and just not worry about them. Now on the Evo 2, you can see the ports here are different. For Sonar, this is the old style of Blue Navico in that we've been using for years. This is the structure scan port. This is now called an Exonic port. So newer transducers like the Total Scan will be using this port here. Now on the Evo 3, you have two Exonic ports. They replaced the old blue Navico end with an Exonic. So you have two Exonic ports instead of one. Now this is great because all the new transducers are going to have Exonic ports. They're going to be ready for the future and present really because they've gotten rid of this. This is now called the Blue Legacy Navico port. So if you're going to swap one for the other, you do have to get at least one adapter to change your Blue Exonic to the old Navico Legacy end. Uh, if you're using a dual chirp transducer like a 275 or 265, you'll need two adapters to switch that over if you want to plug straight through the display. Okay, I just want to take a second and show you the adapter here. This is the Exonic adapter. This takes you from the blue Navico end, the Legacy end, the old style, and uh, gets you to the new Exonic port. You can see the little adapter here. It wasn't very expensive. This is the package for it. Just make sure it says Exonic adapter on it. And uh, that's all you need. Any new transducer you buy will have the Exonic cable end on it already. This is just for the older transducers if you've had one for a few months or a few years.